Hey guys, it is David from the Helmet Center, and uh, today I'm gonna address a question we get a lot at the shop, which is, what's the right oil for my motorcycle? What's the best oil for my side-by-side? -side? Uh, a lot of questions on oil. There will be 400 internet answers about this. There will be 400 different forums dedicated to just motor oil. I'm just gonna give you the basics, because if you really are into the chemistry of it, you know, go to the manufacturer's website and read what they say. But first and foremost, I'm always gonna tell you to reference the owner's manual of your vehicle because it will give you the specs in there. But a couple of the real basic things that you're gonna to wanna to understand is the weight of the oil and the type of the oil. So first and foremost, I'm gonna just grab a random bottle here out of my garage of some Valvoline 1040. So what you're gonna see right here is you're gonna see a number. This one here is a 1040. Uh, you're gonna see 2050, you're gonna see 020, you're gonna see 550, all kinds of crazy stuff. Essentially what that is, is the thickness or viscosity of the oil. The lower the number, the more like water it is. The higher the number, the more like syrup it is. It is very common for air-cooled motorcycles such as Harleys to run a 2050 to get them more um, coverage, more protection from heat uh, because they don't really rev very high. So it's very good for uh, protecting an engine from heat and wear uh, at low RPMs. Then you're gonna get in most modern sport bikes and metrics and they're gonna run, most of them run a 1040, but nowadays some of them are even coming with a thinner oil. The reason they're doing that is because the higher the RPMs these sport bikes turn, you pour syrup of an oil in there, it isn't gonna go through the system as fast as it needs to to run 10, 12,000 RPMs, okay? So cruiser bikes, they're running five, 6,000 RPMs. On a sport bike, they're running up to 16,000 RPMs, which is insane. So you need a very liquidy type of oil to be able to flow through the passages, get into the oil pump, and protect the things it needs to, okay? Now, a 1040 and a 2050, if you accidentally mixed one up one time, not gonna be the end of the world, okay? Now, if you're on a super high-end sport bike, Ducati or something like that, you're really gonna to wanna to make sure you read the owner's manual. It's probably gonna be like a 550 or something like that. But for most, you know, metric cruisers, most, you know, four-cylinder metric bikes, most are gonna be a standard 1040. Most air cools are gonna be a 2050. Side-by-sides, dirt bikes are all gonna range a little bit, but they're gonna be generally within, you know, that 10 to 50 range, okay? One of the biggest things though that you really wanna look at is on the back, you wanna make sure it is made for a wet clutch, okay? Motorcycle clutches are in the oil with the engine oil, and if you use a car oil, which is 99 cents over at AutoZone, it has what's called energy conserving modules inside of it that basically allow your car to get better gas mileage or theoretically better gas mileage. The problem is those friction modifiers is actually what they're called. Those friction modifiers will stick to your wet clutch and you will very soon find out why not to put automotive oil into a motorcycle. Because as you start to rev on the gas, you're gonna hear that clutch go and you're gonna hear it spin and it's gonna actually cause damage to your clutch, bike's not gonna move and for saving a couple bucks. So when it comes to motorcycle oil, expect to spend $10 to $25 a quart because it has those friction, it does not have the friction modifiers in it um, and it is made for a wet clutch. It is also made for a transmission. There's a lot of shearing between the gears and they have to put additives in the oil to allow it to keep that lubricated without breaking down from all the shearing between the gears. So, um, you know, you wanna make sure it is not a car oil, make sure it has good ratings on the back. Um, I could do a whole video just on the ratings, but you're gonna see on the back here, there's an MA and an MA2 rating on the back. The MA2, this one is a MA2. If you look right there, MA2, MA2 is basically just the next step above MA, usually on a higher quality oil. And then you're gonna see right here, you're gonna see the uh, API number, okay? Or API designation, okay? It goes all the way up to, I think they're up to M as in Mary nowadays. So this is an L, the higher the letter, the more protection it gives. So on you know Ducatis and Aprilias and BMWs, high-end stuff, they're gonna require the highest one, which is gonna put you at a SM rating. Um, but you know, most modern bikes, again, my band, it, you know, something like this, you could run something a little lower than that. Uh, you know, this one here is a, a an SL, so it goes, you know, L, M, N, O, actually, take that back, edit that out. Uh, L, L is the second highest one, M is next. I guess, guess I gotta learn my alphabet better. 
Um, but uh, you're going to want to make sure it's MA rated and has an, uh, uh, the S rating of it, you know, LM or at least whatever the manufacturer specs out in the book. Okay. So that's the biggest thing. But the biggest misconception is um, car oil. You know, people put car oil and go, well, it's 99 cents a gallon, right? We've heard people putting in, you know, Rotella uh, diesel oil and stuff. Honestly, I'm not going to argue what you guys put in your motorcycle. It is your motorcycle. You want to throw a Rotella in, you go right ahead. Um, I'm not saying it's positive, negative. I have no opinion on that whatsoever. But I do know that is not what the manufacturer specs out. So use it at your own discretion, okay? Um, the last thing I'm going to mention is people ask me all the time, well, you know, well, can I, if I'm a little short on 1050 and the, you know, the gas station only has 1040, you know, can I mix those? As long as it's a motorcycle oil, you can mix different weights. It's not ideal, but if it meant, you know, topping you off till you got home, you'll be fine. Um, and uh, uh, the other question is, um, you know, can I mix synthetics and semi-synthetics and, you know, uh, non-synthetics? Again, as long as it's all motorcycle, you can, but it's not ideal. If it's an emergency situation, you're not going to blow anything up by doing that. You know, put that stuff in there, get yourself home. You'd rather have oil than no oil. Then when you get home, drain it out, put a, you know, a good uh, change of all, of all the good stuff in. Um, last question. People ask about, you know, hey, what's the difference between regular synthetic and full synthetic? Because I see semi-synthetic uh, or part synthetic, things like that. So essentially what that is, and this is the easiest designation I give for this, is regular base oil is recycled dinosaurs. It is petroleum based, okay? Then you're gonna see semi-synthetic or part synthetic, and that basically means it has a petroleum base with synthetic sprinkles added to it. So it's got some synthetic additives, but it's still a petroleum base. Then you're gonna get up to the full synthetic, and what that means is a full synthetic base and synthetic sprinkles, it gives you the best protection. With a synthetic oil, you can expect longer life between oil changes, you can expect better heat reduction, and you can expect better wear and tear. So there is a reason to get the full synthetics because it does last a little longer. And honestly, when you know when you got your, your favorite motorcycle, putting in an extra $20, $30 per oil change for this, the premium stuff is gonna save you in the long run versus doing a complete engine rebuild or things like that. So just so you know, all right. and. One more question I, I, I got to answer. People ask me all the time, hey, I just bought a brand new motorcycle and the guy just told me to change the oil. What should I do? Man, there's two things I do when I buy a motorcycle. Number one is I change the oil because I don't know what's in it. The guy can tell me he put the right stuff in it, but it's my bike now and I want to make sure. So the first thing I do is an oil change, even if it's clean. And two, I throw new, throw new tires on. Um, Cheap insurance, you know, for you guys that are out there, um, that you know that, that your tires are in good shape, uh, the engine's protected. Beyond that, all the other stuff can be adjusted as you need to. But uh, you know, that is it with oil. Now, um, Harley's, I will say this: Harley's have a separate um, primary uh, and a separate transmission. So on the Harley's, there are the three three distinct oils that you know, like AMS oil or Motul will actually make for it. Do you have to use it? No, but you know, they purposely put little, you know, modifiers in for each individual one. There's a lot of guys that on Harleys will run just a standard, uh, Amsoil 2050 in the engine, the training and the primary, but they do actually make specific engine oil, specific transmission oil, and specific primary oil. You can use that if you like, or you can use just the regular uh, oil on that one. Side by sides, that's a whole nother story. Uh, but again, as long as it's a wet clutch, make sure it is not automotive oil. Make sure it is a motorcycle or power sports. And nowadays, honestly, they make it kind of easy for you. They put little pictures right on the front there, kind of tells you what type of bike or what type of unit it's for. They have some that actually say side-by-side -side oil or dirt bike oil and stuff like that. So, you know, the bases are saying there's probably some little extra sprinkles in there for X, Y, Z, but essentially it's going to be, you know, uh, the same bases. You're going to see, oh, I only use Yamalube. Oh, I only use, you know, a Honda, whatever. These guys don't own refineries. Okay. These products are made for them by Maxima or, you know, uh, Motul or Belray or whatever. These guys don't have their own factories. They're not making Honda specific oil specifically for your Honda. If it makes you feel warm and fuzzy to put Yamalube in a Yamaha, you go right ahead. I'm not going to dispute that with you. However, just so you know, if somebody's like, man, that's really expensive to get Yamalube, oh, man, I can get like, you know, a synthetic name brand for cheaper you're paying for the name, you're paying for the Yamalube, you know, you're paying for that name. Now, are there specific sprinkles in there that make it unique to them? Probably, but you know, 99% of the oil 
is going to be the same. And again, it's made by a reputable manufacturer. They're not going to buy some cheap garbage oil and put Yamalube on. So it's going to be a name brand. It's just going to be labeled with their name on it so that they can charge a little more and make a little more money after the sale. So anyways, so that's uh, motorcycle oil in a 10 minute nutshell. I tried to make that 30 seconds or less and that did not succeed. So if you have any questions, uh, DM us. You know, post up under the video, ask a question. We'll try and answer it as best we can for you. But uh, there is engine oil for motorcycles for dummies, uh, courtesy of Dave at the Helmet Center. So appreciate you guys and ride safe, all right?